if you have to create a bunch of records inside of Dataverse and you're doing something like this with an apply to each and add a new row, totally works, but there's a way you could do it with just one action. You can use the web API and put all 20, 30, 50 items in there and do it in just one call. In my example, I'm getting a bunch of files from SharePoint, and then I want to turn them into tasks. Instead of using the add a new row Dataverse action, I'm going to click the plus and add one of my favorite called invoke in HTTP request. And make sure to pick the pre-authorized one so that way you're authenticated right away. Now, you might not see this menu right away. You might have to come up here and click change connection. And if you click add new, you might see something like this. All you need to do is hop into your Dynamics or Dataverse instance, copy the URL up to the .com, hop back in here, paste it, get rid of the slash, and then paste it again and click sign in. You want to come into here and select post. And then for the URI, you only have to put part of it. And it's this api.data 9.2 batch. The reason I know that is because it's coming from the documentation on batch requests. I'll link to this. And if we click show all, we need to add some headers and the body. And it gets a little tricky. Here's what we want to build. I know it looks gnarly, but we have to first start with just this piece up here. These are our headers. So I'm going to start with O data one for one copy and content type gets a little weird. Once I get to boundary because it's in quotes, so I'm going to do equals quotes and I'm going to need to generate some kind of good. We'll do that in a sec. But if I go underscore batch, underscore, let's just say I type in one, two, three, right away, I'm going to get this enter valid JSON. What you need to do is make sure to escape all of your quotes, and then it stops yelling at you. All right, let's make our GUID first. So I up here created a new compose action. And all I did was come in here into the expression, just type in the word GUID, type in the word GUID, lowercase, and with parentheses, click add, that's it. So now when you run it, you're gonna have a nice GUID here. So now we can repurpose this by going down here into our HTTP request. And then in here, instead of this one, two, three, let's go use our brand new GUID. And let's click save. Heads up, this is gonna randomly delete your backslash. You're gonna have to type it in again because it's gonna throw this error message at you, but then you'll be good to go. We finished the top part. Let's move to the next sections. They're surprisingly simple. This right here is repeating itself exactly the same every time. So I have my individual tasks here and between them, I just gotta put this text here. So this isn't that overwhelming. And here is where the differences are. Here we put the schema name of the table, in this case, task. If you're doing a custom table, it's going to be something like this. And these are just the columns. So if I open up my task table in a solution and I look at one of the columns and then come down here and look at the schema name, that's what this is right here. And this is just a lookup. And if you're wondering, like, kind of like what this is here, if we hop back if I use the add a new row task and I put here the subject and the accounts, if I click on code view, I'm going to see here subject and regarding ID. Look, it's exactly the same as this. So Power Automate is actually just doing this behind the scenes using the API. Let's start looping and creating all of these individual tasks. Side note, if you're solving these types of complex problems in the Power Platform, it probably means you're ready to become a solutions architect. I've got a specific training just for that in the description. Maybe you want a higher salary, or maybe you want to make sure you're building complex applications the right way. It's already helped 26 people in the last three weeks. All right, let's get back to it. So I made a new empty string variable, and then I'm going to use the apply to each to go populate it to build this. So in here, I'm going to start typing all of this. So it begins with batch underscore, and let's select our GUID from earlier. And then under here, we got to do content type, and it's just a uh, copy and paste from here. And then we want to open it up to our actual object. 
type in here subject and then whatever value I want. In this case, I want the from my SharePoint action, I'm going to get JSON that looks like this. And I just want the name property. Since I am inside of an apply to each, I can go into here, select the expression and type in item and then the property. Click add. As you've probably done in Dataverse many times, you have to put the plural name of whatever lookup table you're connecting to, and then you got to add the GUID here, except you don't do the GUID with quotes. So I'm going to just hard code it because I'm not going to dynamically generate it. So let's steal it from up here and then pop that right into here. So I'm going to hit save. Your final result should look like this. Don't forget the commas. Make sure you got the right spacing here so it doesn't mess up anywhere. Because if you do have an error here, you're going to get super vague error messages like this. And if we run this and we open up our batch body, after our apply to each, we look into here and it's like, oh, all right, that's, that's pretty neat. The subject here is just the name of the files I'm getting. Okay. We've just recreated this. Now the moment of truth. Let's hop back into our HTTP request. And then down here in the body, let's add this request body we just made. Click save. And if we come up here and rerun it again, green is good. And this looks promising, but the proof is in the pudding. If I go here and refresh, booyah. It all created all the records that I had, plus it put the regarding field. Some other things to consider is if you notice, I can put tasks here, but can I switch it up and put other tables here? So maybe you can make multiple different kinds of records at the same time, worth exploring. Some further thoughts to consider is how many records can this thing handle? How many is too many? Does it start dropping them after a certain while? And even though you can do this to create multiple records in one go, do you want to? Is data flows a better example? How does this handle errors? Like if one of them fails, these are the questions that architects care about. If you want to start thinking in this bigger level, I highly suggest the training. And as always, feel free to leave a comment. If you got any questions, I'll be sure to answer it and like and subscribe.